night. I don't wanna hear a peep, let the boss talk. I be speaking for the trenches, this that boss talk. White snakes, no crease, how the boss walk. I be shooting from the logo, this that boss talk. I don't want the middle man, hit the boss up. She gon' make it shake more, cause our boss talk. Stayed down, made a plan, had the boss up. Lil' dip with the lean, this how boss walk. A lot of niggas be thinking they boss when it comes to that talking, all them words at a loss. A lot of niggas be thinking they boss, light hard and with the moves, I'ma shimmy when you fall. So you do what everybody doing, I ain't basic. And I, and I want it all, no cap, that's a statement. But something still ain't gotta be explained, understatement. They let us all chill the wrong order, I ain't drinking. And we back with Boss Talk, it's Josh. Keys. And we back, man. Another episode. Welcome to the Bosses Circle, mm -hmm. where we talk sports, music, and the culture. Man, Keith, we here for, again. And we have our special guest in the, in the circle. Yes, we sir. have Dev, right? You know what I mean? Or known on Instagram, chill. My name is Dev. Yeah, <laughs> my name Dev. <laughs> Dev is a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, he also has his own brand. And he's building something very special and making waves in the city. I'm sure y'all know him based, based off his motivational videos and all that. And his, even his brand, um, Peace, Love, Prosperity. And, yeah, and he's here on Boss Talk with a, a couple bosses like us to have a boss conversation, right? Yes, you know? sir. How it feel to be a boss talk, Def? It feel great. You feel me? Uh, first of all. It feels good to be a part of something that I actually tune into. Yeah, he's um, a fan. <laughs> so, on uh, on behalf of peace, love, and positivity, I'm happy to be here. Hey. You feel me? Yes. Um, thank you for a great introduction, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, motivational speaker. I've been doing this for about three years now. Mm. Uh, three going on three and a half, actually. And I've been having my own clothes for about two years now. Started that up in 2020. Pandemic year. Yeah, pandemic <laughs> year. It's funny because that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, I guess we can get straight into it. Yeah. Um, so when I first started Peace, Love, and Positivity, it was not money-based. It was uh, I, just, I was just speaking because it was something that I wanted to do. It, mm. I felt like I had stuff to get off my chest. Um, I put a video out probably about a month or so later. Put out another video just talking about, you know, uh, my first video was uh, about hard work, then mm. about financial literacy. And then after that, I think it probably took like two months before I just started pushing them out every Wednesday. And every I've been, Wednesday. Yep, Dedication. And I've okay. been doing that for three years now. Dang. Every Wednesday. And I feel like I could probably count on, on two hands how many weeks I missed. Wow. So I've been, yeah, I've been pretty consistent over the years. Um, but yeah, pandemic year. When I had first started making clothes, you know, I was making the videos for about a year at that point. And people was telling me like, yo, like, let me get a shirt. I'm like, I don't sell clothes. Like, what you mean? I'm <laughs> like, listen, I need you to get on that. And it made me think because multiple people, multiple people have been saying it to me. Like, I want to see peace, love, and positivity on clothes. So I took my pandemic money, I put it into a separate bank account, and <laughs> I leveraged that money to just, all right, I can mess up. I can buy different brands of shirts, different brands of hoodies, see what's comfortable, what's not, what's itchy, what, you know, shrink in the wash too much, what wow. deteriorates. And, like, I kind of just use that, you know. And everybody that, you know, got PUA, I feel like everybody did their thing. They party and did whatever, whatever. You know, I had my fair share of that. But, like, most of my pandemic money, I just straight put it into the business. Into the mm -hmm. brand, like you should have. And, you know, from there, I found, okay, these make the most comfortable shirts. These ones got a little bit of stretch to them. These ones, you know, these ones, I'm not liking these because they, they get itchy after a while. And I, you know, went through that process for all my shirts, sweatpants, track suits hoodies till i got like where i wanted to be from you know my level of business mm. and uh from there i just kept it all rolling you know i got i got people that say oh you know you you work you do da da da, da and then you got your business you probably touching a lot of paper and i'm like y'all yeah, know the first <laughs> rule of business is don't touch your business money and put it back into the business wow and it, it made me think um because again like i said my my second video is about financial literacy i had thought that this was common knowledge um, that, you know, you got a business until your b business is soaring, until it's thriving, you're not really seeing that money right. unless yeah. you are, you know, trying to survive off your business. And that's the only form of income that you got. Then, you you know, you take, you know, you put enough aside to live and then all that other stuff goes straight back into the business. But it's certain things, certain principles that I thought was common knowledge that I see, you know, more and more from just talking to people and kind of getting engaged on people that like, 
oh, it's really not as common not as I a, thought it was. Yeah. It's not like it's completely foreign knowledge or anything, but certain things like, like leveraging your PUA money to have it make money for years to come. Mm. That's one thing. Mm. Um, a, a, a few principles that really shape the way that I think and, and how I move now, using the word no carefully, you know, that's that's another thing that I feel like could could benefit a lot of people to where, for sure. you know, people need stuff from you, you can use that word no carefully, leverage that. And as far as taking the opportunity, never saying no. Never, yeah. Right. Um, that's something like after I started to understand that more, I started seeing things move into place for me. Uh, never saying no to an opportunity, whether it be something that's like in your field, whether it's like unless you see no benefit at all and you got other stuff on your plate, don't say no. Don't say no. If mm. you if you don't got nothing on your plate, but somebody come to you like, yeah, you can do this, and you're like, oh, I don't really know about all that, but you're not doing nothing else. What are you saying no for? Mm. If mm. if nothing else, fill your time. You might meet somebody. You might find out you like something new. You know. Might find out something about yourself Excuse at the end of the day. Yeah, because, like, we, we in our 20s. Some people that's watching this is in their teens, some in their 30s. We haven't tried everything. Right. We don't know exactly all the things that we do and don't like. So it's like you try something new, you really could gain an experience that if you would have just said no, you really don't know what would have came from that. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's another one of my key principles that I learned since starting PLP. Another thing, learn how to do everything myself. Uh, I had a lot of help. Or yeah, I had a lot of help from just you know my support, my support system. Have a very strong support system. Uh, my loved ones very supportive off the rip, which is something that I'm blessed to have. When I first started, like I was telling y'all, I was buying different stuff, doing you know getting different type of materials from different websites and whatnot. I had a printer, like I had someone that manufactured my print that I was working with, and you know we had a we had a good relationship. Was working for a while, and I got with somebody else that was you know doing things for a better price. Mm. And but this one, he showed me the game. I used to come to his crib. He showed me like, look, this is what I do with this this type of machine I got. You know, this is how many hours I put in, how many clothes I can make from that. And then I took that, also did my own research, went straight to YouTube University, yes, man, yeah. put in them hours. Um, I, I think I did probably at least two hours of research on YouTube alone just to see what kind of printer I wanted to get before I started learning how to use it, mm -hmm. then figuring out what type of clothes go best with each material, what type of vinyl works with what type, with what type of cloth, what, what type of cotton, stuff like that. Um, then, you know, I cut out the middleman, started making my own stuff uh, between leveraging money that's given to you never saying no to an opportunity and then learning how to do every part of my business myself mm. i think it made for the most growth to ensure my success and really i'm, I'm kind of just moving at my own pace on my own scale i feel like not only do i feel like i know that i'm sitting on millions of dollars that once i actually decide to dedicate myself to it completely I have everything to come in place, but mm -hmm. I also got things that I'm doing other, other than peace, love, and positivity that I don't really speak about, you know, publicly or online or anything like that, that I'm actually happy with, you know, moving towards things that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. well, 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 Dev, take me, take me back to the beginning. That's where I want to go to right now is you, you were heavily into like um, nonprofit organizations and everything growing up, right? Yeah, so I've been a talk part about of a nonprofit that for a minute. organization, uh, the Jarrell Christopher Say Love and Laughter Foundation, since I was 10. So we're going on 12, 13 years now. Right. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I lost my brother to gun violence. Mm -hmm. and you know, that, that took a toll on my family, you know, mm -hmm. as it would most. So my mom was in different groups and organizations and different, you know, support groups to try to help, help keep them strong. And she met a woman that I, you know, I now call my auntie and I joined that foundation without even knowing I joined the foundation, just building a rapport and, and becoming family, really. And yeah. then I joined their organization because they had also lost their son uh, two years after I lost my brother. And I, I had been wow. a part of that organization ever since. To this day, we still doing things. Um, and, you know, we actually doing good with securing more grants and more funds to do bigger things than what we was doing when I was 10, when I was 12, 13, stuff like that. So growing up in that kind of environment, seeing it's like if you organize a bunch of regular people and take your ideas and actually put work you, towards them, yeah, you really can what? create some great things. And like the foundation, the JCS Foundation has really like done some stuff, like made some waves in the city. You know, when it comes to community work, it's not things that like you hear about and it has a lasting effect. Yeah. But the lives it's impacted 
has the last name. They'll go on and talk mm -hmm. about that. Their for name sure. will go on further exactly. than the organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So being in that environment definitely uh, it shaped the way that I think, and it shaped how I how I viewed things as far as putting in the work to create something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a good observation. Hey, that's good. Okay. So I, yeah, I appreciate that's that. That's dope. Take us a little bit of behind uh, what made you become a motivational speaker. So this is funny, right? Um, growing up, just like you was telling me, y'all have been talking about sports going back and forth with that kind of thing all the time. For at least a decade now. <laughs> yeah, that was me growing up. When I was on a track team at elementary <laughs> school, they called me ESPN. I used to have all oh, the sports wow. on lock, not just ball, not just football. I knew what was going on with college, with baseball. I even knew some hockey, all that. So I was always, you know, I always was good at trying to get my point across whenever it came to, whenever it came to arguing my team. Uh, and then, of course, you know, being a Jets fan, ain't nobody going. <laughs> a Jets fan. Oh, yeah, Keith, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> I forgot to no, tell you that. He told me. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, we oh he about told it. you. Oh, wow. It's maybe more uncomfortable coming from him. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> So it's like being, being the, first off being a non uh, non Eagles fan, you got to be better at getting your point across, and you got to be ready to be on oh go. To, what uh, point was you get getting across. across about the Jets? Hey, listen, man, <laughs> look, we just played in the preseason. We y'all got that work. We gonna play again when it, when it, when it's really going to count. Oh. But we're not even gonna get into all that right now. What man. I hated about this is Saba. What I hated about talking to Eagles fans was they ain't never win shit, but they had the most talk. Yo, the literally Niggas been a just... team for like seventy five years, winning they their first win chip. Shit. I'm when talking about before they won a chip, they were so gassed up. Like, oh, my God. Crazy. Man, we had more relevant years than the Donovan Jets, man. Donovan McStab. Man. <laughs> Listen, the, the Jets wasn't relevant since the seventies. Four and twelve. That's one of the funniest years I ever had. <laughs> we going to the bowl. We going to the bowl. Winning four games out the year. <laughs> Fucking trash. Go ahead. But oh, back man. to that point. Why are you a motivational um, speaker? Sorry. I always, I always had to be good at getting my point across. Uh, whether it was debates, whether it was in agreements with people, and then one day I literally, I just wanted to. I set up my camera. I put up my phone against a ledge or something. And I had something to say, so I just I spoke it, and the, like the 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 ref, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the response I got from all you know my followers, like you know my friends on Instagram was crazy. I I had put it up in my story. I didn't even think really think much of it. I was just talking, thinking that nobody was gonna listen for real for real. Mm. But like the the feedback was crazy, so I posted it on my page, and then like it started getting shared out like crazy. Um, you know at the time. I probably I probably had like uh, like a thousand less followers, still not that much, but like I probably had like probably like a thousand total followers or whatever, and like that joint ended up getting like 165 shares. Wow. I'm Ooh. like, hey, and this he before, was happy. This before reels was a thing. I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of crazy. You said I need to go into it. Um, shares is crazy. Yeah, so from there, I mean, I wasn't really worried about the numbers. The fact that people was actually DMing me and saying like, yo, like you snapped on that. Um, and then afterwards, like I said, um, I had made my second video. I was talking about financial literacy. I was actually on the road. I was uh, I was in I I was in Virginia because mm -hmm. I was training for a teaching program, and uh, something had happened, you know, back here in Philly, and I was I was kind of devastated about it. Um, this is about yeah, this is about three years ago, and I just decided to prop my camera up and talk again. And then mm. from there, like, I again, I got a similar response. And I said to myself, you know, I'm going, I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about. And I'm going to get these thoughts off really just as a video archive. Because, like, no matter whether somebody tunes in, nobody tune in, it's nobody says anything to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my video diary. Mm -hmm. Like, I be having th so many thoughts up here. My mind is always moving at a thousand miles a minute that, like, I'm going to let some thoughts get out of my head, and if I want to look back and view them later, I can do that. Yeah. So from there, um, and, and that's really still what I'm on. Like, I, I'm just propping up a camera. I got a little bit of equipment now, but, like, I just prop up a camera. And talk. And talk. You know, some sometimes it's more organized than others. Sometimes I freestyle it. Sometimes I know exactly what I want to talk about and exactly how I'm going to say it. But it's it's just me. And as far as being a motivational speaker... I want to help people not only feel good, but I want to help people expand their mind. I want to help people think about things differently. You know, I want to have a platform to be positive towards other people. Because before Peace, Love, and Positivity was ever a business, you can go back to the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of my pictures on Instagram. I was hashtagging Peace, Love, and Positivity for years, like, right. like f f before I ever made a video. Uh, that's really the three words I live my life by. 
I got it tatted right here, mm. peace, love, mm. and positivity. That's really something that I kind of grew up on. So it was like, when it came to me starting my thing, my first video, for some reason, I was just like the peace, love, and positivity way. And it mm. stuck to this day. Mm. You know, that, that's that's my thing. That's my uh, that's my website name, the plpway.com. Mm. Uh, and from, you know, from there, I just, I'm really just doing the same things that I've been doing for years now. Mm -hmm. And as I continue to be more consistent, more people catch on, more people look at it. Um, I'm getting more polished and everything, but for the most part, I'm not changing anything. Wow. Um, it's working. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just working work, fix it. for mm -hmm. sure. And when I first started up the business, uh, back in 2020, I, I told myself and I told my close people around me, like, look, y'all think that, um, or they didn't even think that, but, um, they didn't think this, but most some people oh they make a business they want to blow up in a year they want to like get their money up pay somebody famous to wear their stuff yeah. and you know that's not a bad route to take that's that's just not me i'm looking at it like look i've been saying i don't got a business because i don't got anything that i'm passionate about but if i got a business i'm going to put this work into it and it's really going to be my thing Dang. so by the time i started i'm looking 10 years in the future yeah 10 years from now I'm going to be great. That's what I said to myself when I first started. Look, if I'm snapping now, just think about it 10 years from now because peace, love, and positivity, as you can see, is tatted on me. It's not going nowhere. Mm. So in 10 years, I'm going to be great. 20 years is going to be crazy. I'm going to be doing peace, love, and positivity. Even if I'm not doing videos every week, I'm going to be doing something peace, love, and positivity 30, 40, 50 years from now to the day I die. So it's wow. like, it's just going to be something that I'm building over time. Keep, keep moving and keep and, you doing know, your thing. Uh, the identity of PLP can change, but like I said, I've been doing the same thing for a while now. I've been growing, and every time I learn something new about myself, every time I learn something new about the world and the way I view things, I just kind of put it in there. Uh, a lot of my PLP videos at the time was something that I'm working on trying to get better at. Mm. That's, a, that's something else. Like, I actually get a lot of messages like over, over time that, oh yeah, you actually helped me get through something. That's mm. the type of stuff that's like, yo, Keep I was going to keep going regardless, but if I wasn't, that's the thing that's going to keep me up. Yeah. I think the, the, the best thing that keeps me from be, uh, having burnout from doing this every single week is that I'm doing this for me as much, if not more, than I'm doing it for anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really, I, as far as social media, I kind of... I kind of keep, you know, my, my personal life under wraps and mm. I don't really speak on things too much, but a lot of people don't know this. I got a lot of stuff going on outside of peace, love, and positivity that people think that I've been doing so great with the business. I be looking at it like, yo, I ain't did X, Y, Z in a while because I'm working on so much other stuff. People tell me, yo, you doing great. The fact that you keep posting, I see you snapping. The fact that you always coming out with something, with some new clothes, you snapping, you doing this, you doing that. And I look at it like, yo, I ain't really did nothing yet. I barely Just even started for real. Yeah. Like, I, I know so how be. I want things to be, and I know what I'm capable of doing, especially after I learn how to, like, cut out the middleman on different things and really learn how to do everything myself. The fact that I know how to do every aspect of my business myself, that when I start franchising or when I start employing people, I know exactly how I want it. Mm. And then they can add their vision that, all right, if they suggest something and I agree with it, I right, bet we can make it that much better. It's just mm. like that for... <sighs> for um, for the next year or so, I actually plan to be doing a couple festivals. I got my first one coming up this Saturday. Wow! Uh, Rocktoberfest. Right. Okay. And yeah, I posted. Yeah, I posted about it. Um, but I don't really think that like people that aren't in that kind of area and then like that demographic realize how big so it is. So you're going to be speaking there, or what are you uh, going to no, be doing? I'm going to be vending at Rocktoberfest. Oh, vending. Okay. So yeah, um, I think it was this past summer or maybe it was like the spring i was uh i was up in manny young and mm. the people that basically are running this rocktoberfest it's like i think it's main street is one of the is one of the main streets in manny young like the whole strip nothing but food trucks and vendors yeah music performances on both ends of the street and i'm looking and I'm like yo it's literally thousands of people here and then the opportunity came to me where it's like you can oh yeah you, you can vend here i'm That's like hot. Rock like, Turbo Fest be going heavy though, honestly, mm -hmm. in the area. Yeah, I'm like that. Was, that was a crazy good opportunity, and it made me it made me realize that you don't really gotta be too much in tune and know like people on the inside to do stuff like this. You just gotta know what kind of stuff is going on. Cause mm -hmm. that same that same vending fee that I pay for Rock Turbo Fest, somebody you know a lot of people be charging to come to their pop up shop 
and like 35 to 50 people come through and it's like wow. seven different businesses in like one relatively small area fighting for the same 50 people yes yeah, fighting <laughs> for the same 50 people and this like festivals go crazy especially yeah. like ones where it's music playing on like and like pe- a bunch of people thousands of people out in the street all the trucks like, and stuff yeah all the trucks and stuff like that people gonna be happy they're gonna be fed and you know that's 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 one thing off my uh one thing off my goal list to con- and then then to continue doing things like that and learn about different events that are of the same or possibly even a bigger nature mm. like really I'm, I'm i'm trying to learn new things each month keep and spreading that, was, that. Yeah, keep that spreading was, that, that, that piece of positivity that was big. man mm-hmm. yeah so dev so uh you spoke about losing your brother at a young age and things like that. Did that play any part in uh, becoming a motivational speaker? I know a lot of your, your conversations about gun violence and things like that. Um, I wouldn't say that it played a part in becoming a motivational speaker, but it definitely played a huge part in me wanting to be a person of the people um, and just wanting to help people and uh, having a good heart. That comes from like my mom, and partially from losing my brother because it, it really brought us closer together that kind of that kind of experience can really either tear a family apart mm, or bring yeah. them closer together you know god blessing the god blessed us for it to bring us all closer together and uh just we wanted to we all wanted to do better things we all wanted better for other people so that they didn't have to go through the you know the, the anger and really just the the overall rabidness that makes someone want to take another person's life mm-hmm. So that's definitely where that came wow. from. Wow, dang. Okay. Steve, Steve, Steve. So what? When when you make your content, like, you know, because you, you do a lot of different types of content, or like creativity with it. You know, you uh, you outside this day, you're in building this school that day, whatever the case may be. How do you come up with your content? You know what I mean? As far as my topics, um, like I like I spoke on earlier, sometimes it's really what I'm going through right now and something that I want to get better at. Um, sometimes it is something that just popped to me one day, like, yo, this is, this is, this is a way that I feel about something. And this is the way I want to articulate that. As far as my setting, it really just depends on what my schedule looks like that week. Um, sometimes I'm in the car cause you know, I'm moving around on mobile. Uh, sometimes I got time to actually be outside to actually, you know, set up the tripod and actually make an outside video. Other times I'm inside the building, like I'm inside the school, I'm a teacher. Yeah. So like sometimes that's really just the only time that I got for that week to really get a video out. Like wow. Wednesday come back real fast they every do. week, mm-hmm. every single week <laughs> Wednesday come by real fast. <laughs> it's been times where I tried to like record in advance to have like a few weeks. Like um, yeah, but get like, the clue to clip it, up. Yeah, it really that really don't even be working too much for me. It's not something that's impossible, but it's something that like every every video come from the heart. So it's really rare that I ever record a video back to back. And if I record my video for the week, unless I really see like a, a good time or something just comes to me in that moment, I'm not recording another video like the next day or nothing like that. Um, I think that comes from like the fact that I know I don't got to put something out for another week. Mm. Um, but yeah. Pretty much. That's cool. Dang. It's dope. Wow. That's dope. The process and everything about it that you go about it is consistent. Yeah. Consistency is key, they say, when you, when you... Especially when you're putting out content, because if you don't, you know what I mean, you could lose the maybe the, the people that you got, yeah. or if you don't even stick to the brand of what, you know, your brand is, if you go off-brand, it's like, ah, uh, you may lose people, because it's like, hold up, you know, you put good content out. If you don't go to where the direction is supposed to be, it can just mess up things. So that's good that you got your consistency and all your content is on brand. Most definitely. Yeah, definitely. Anybody that's, that f- follows me now and been following me for a while, if there's one thing about me, you know that I'm putting out a new video on Wednesday, anywhere between <laughs> 4 o'clock to 5.30. You know it's coming out, whether I put up a countdown, whether I talk about it on the gram. If I don't post all week, I don't post no stories all week. I haven't posted anything on my Instagram at all since the last time I posted. You know a video is coming out on Wednesday, so mm. you know when you're going to catch it and you can know when to expect it. It's facts. It's facts. That's all promo right there. Hey. <laughs> Wednesday coming up. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the opportunity. You talked about opportunity, right? Yes, sir. Let's talk about the opportunity that you had to talk at a graduation ceremony at Darrow. Oh uh, man, what was that like? And like, you know, how was the emotions going through? You know, 
How did you get that done? Dog, that was exhilarating. So, fun fact, before I even talk about that. Mm, you um, said exhilarating. He said, oh, you feel really good at that point. Unfortunately, uh, Darrell, some things happened to where the school closed down. So, I spoke at their last graduation. Wow. As a school. History. Hopefully, they can get things up and running, you know, next school year and everything. But it was, it was some situations that happened where it was eventually just going to end up being too difficult and not fair to the kids to you know have everything be like at half speed so yeah i spoke at daroff's right as of right now i spoke at daroff's last official graduation um that that opportunity came from the foundation i know somebody that sit on the board uh and he knows the principal personally they like this and you know they, they came to my folks and was like do you know somebody that can speak to this graduation we got mm. coming up and everything and you know my uncle man he was like Said, Hell yeah. I got somebody. <laughs> so they told me about that. They told me about that, and it wasn't even that much of a notice ahead of it, but I was just so excited. Um, they told me, look, I, I, or he gave me the number, reached out to the principal, Dr. Ruffin. Uh, I, I spoke with him for a little bit, emailed back and forth with the, uh, with the front desk. They told me, like, look, we want five to seven minutes. Mm. We want something that could possibly be an acronym, and we want wow. something that's going to be powerful. I had it done probably like two days three days like i did most of it in the in that same 40 minutes wow um, oh, i was, was i was excited you knew what you wanted to talk about and all you was ready yeah. so i couldn't wait <laughs> I, I couldn't wait moment for like yeah for sure <laughs> that was uh definitely one of my uh top two speaking experiences like ever at this point well shit That's you gotta heavy. tell us what the fuck is number one yes what was the oh, first man. one <laughs> so when I, uh, around the time i first started doing this you on boss talk come on for sure uh <laughs> rest in peace to walter wallace man um i went to a protest which man uh i'm just going to st uh, stay on schedule i went to a protest and uh i just i just wanted to you know march with the people and be a part of the people and you know do what they had going or be a part of what they had going on and I saw a couple people there, like I saw B. McFly there, I saw a couple community activists that's yes. like making waves in the city. And uh, we walked from, I believe it was like 58th and Spruce down to Malcolm X Park on 52nd Street. Yeah. And uh, I was I was just talking with the, some of the people and uh, like I was I was really, you know, out there in the field with them. They, mm. they had the cops bar uh, barricade and everything. And, and we was wow. right at their neck. Cause Little like, 2020. Yeah. And they, they was drawn we was right at their neck so somebody had realized and that i was like you know in there you know spreading my voice and everything by the time we got to malcolm x park it got to be like more than 500 people in that park and wow. i came up they they had me spoke uh they had me speak it was like real spontaneous like it was just like yeah like you want to come up here like i saw you earlier and we was down there like come up here and talk and dog it was just like i, I gave somebody my phone i'm like can you record me and I, I I delivered a message, and that was that. Mm, that was cool. that was really nerve wracking because I'm like, yo, yeah. If it, it felt like being an artist, I never seen that many people just having eyes on me at once. Wow. Like everybody out there just felt like little Dirk with the eyes like this. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yo, this is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Dang. That was, between that and speaking at the graduation, that's my top two. I can't even pick one between them to be honest. I mean, that seems like amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was my first ever like speaking experience. That was my first time ever. Wow, that's dope. But what what is it about the youth that you know? Why is it so much important for your message to be catered to the youth? Because that's a lot of your messages are, you know. Um. So as far as that, I had always been heavily involved with the youth, even when I was like heavily youth myself like by the time mm. i was like 13 i knew that i wanted to uh, put a community center back in southwest mm. the community center uh, at the park that i grew up around like that john like it was open for part of the year most of the time you couldn't get in not even to use the bathroom the course was messed up before Shoprite came and fixed them up Shoprite came and fixed them up and then they got messed up right after that um not a lot of funding into that park so even before i knew what i wanted to do like for career wise, I knew that I wanted whatever I want to do. I want to make enough money. I want to give back to the hood. I want to put a community center back where I used to play ball at. Mm. Um, I got young bulls. Before my young bulls even looked up to me, I said, I'm going to be the person that my young bulls can look up to. Wow. And you are that, huh? And you grew up to be that. Yeah, that's like really most of what I do is for one, my family, and two, for my young bulls, and three, for anybody else that got young bulls to see, like, look, you are the example. Because no matter what you say, 
no matter what you do, no matter like how secretive you try to be about things, kids not dumb. They pick up on stuff. We yeah. picked up on stuff. Easily. It's like they been <laughs> getting exposed to more and more things. So it was like try to do something positive. I'm not trying to tell nobody to live a perfect life. I'm not trying to tell nobody to live no type of forced life, but just know set the example because whether you want to be the example or not, you're the example. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. They looking at everything. Keys, you know, you know, we we gotta we gotta go into the brand, right, Keys? Because that, yeah, that that's yes. something that he definitely talked about earlier. But we want him to go into it as plain as day, just for the people mm-hmm. understand. Hey, show him, show him the logo. Show, show him the logo, man. man. Oh, Come yeah. on, put in the camera right here. You feel him? You got yeah. the merch show on. Positivity. Show it off. The shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the hat. Show show the tats off again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Peace, love, positivity. You're I gotta so get this shaded in. I've been saying that for probably like two years. I don't think I'm going. I I haven't gotten. I haven't been back to get a new tat. But if I do, I got. You're gonna get, get that defined. Yeah, the purple and the red. Go mm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Now, but, but what what is peace, love, and prosperity? Can you just break down the message simple to the people, you know, quickly? All right. So, peace, love, and positivity. Um, it it, it means it could mean a different thing to everybody, but to me personally, peace first of all is for peace of mind. Mm. Now, I am anti-violence as well, but peace of mind is more important than anything else on this planet to me. It's more important than money. It's mm. more important than anything materialistic. Anything materialistic that you can get. You feel me? Yeah, Peace yeah. of mind comes first because you had a whole world and not be happy. Right. You know, that's that's first off. That's number one. Love. Everything I do, I do it with love. Even mm. if it's not something that I love doing, I move with love so that it can be spread. You know, as mm. far as... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a gem. Like, that's, that's <laughs> definitely like one of the main things that, you know, when I wake up in the morning, whatever I do, I do it with love. I do it because... If not, what are you doing it for? You feel me? It's right, like, yeah. it's even point. when I had a job that I didn't want to be my career, it's like, when I move, I move with love because it's like, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and be mad that I'm here all day. Right. I'm, I'm deciding how I spend my time. It's a million ways to make money out here. Yeah, so yeah. either do something you love or if you got a good opportunity that's paying you well that you're not the most fond of, move with love so that while you're there, you can make the best of that situation. Ooh. Right. And then uh, positivity. Preach. Uh, everything has a positive and a negative side. Mm. So you can decide to think of the negative or you can decide to think of the positive. And I'm not, you know, saying, you know, think in a, a, a term as in terms of like false positivity or toxic positivity where everything just got to be good and everything is happy all the time or nothing like that. Yeah. But everything has a positive and a negative. So it's like you can either dwell on the negative or you can think of the silver lining and try to get to the positive. Mm. You feel me? Um as far as, uh, for example, let's say I lost my wallet and then I had $50 in there in all 10s. When I get my wallet back, it's only $20 left. Uh, I'm like, dang, I, c- I could really dwell over that $30 and that's crazy. Or I could be the- happy with the fact that I got money. Mm. Or if I don't got any money left in there, I could be happy with the fact I got my wallet and I got my IDs in there. Be appreciative of the little things. Shit, I got my IDs, my credit card and shit. Yeah, like, Be appreciative of what you have. Exactly. Focusing on the positive side of things. Because if you focus Ooh. on the positive side of things, it's really, it really shapes the way that you think. Yeah. And through peace, love, and positivity, I really have built some good habits that, not that I never thought I would have, but it just becomes easier and easier every day to maintain those positive habits and not even just positive for productivity because it's good for that too. It's, it's, it's positive and it's positive for my state of mind. You mm. feel me? Um, a lot of people don't know this, but when I started Peace, Love, and Positivity, I was in the worst f- frame of mind in my life, like to wow. this day. Um, the thing that made me so comfortable to speak in front of that camera and actually post it on the gram, and I, I, people could have said that I was talking that BS. People could have been bidding on me, which they probably was, to be honest, but I never even, I never saw it. I never looked at it. I never really thought of it. It was like, I don't care what anybody got to say about me. I'm in the most down time of my life. I need this. And yeah, I need this for mm-hmm. me. I'm that doing this for me. And that's something that God blessed me with. He blessed me with that opportunity that I didn't say no to. And it changed my life. And it's still changing my life every day, years later. God is good, man. God is the greatest, man. <laughs> Boss, greatest. man. Woo! So. That's right. Let's clap it up for that, man. Let's clap it up, man. So now I want to get into a more negative side, unfortunately, of the city or whatever. Um, 
just to get back on the, uh, the crime rate in Philadelphia. Ridiculous. Yeah, the crime rate in Philadelphia is ridiculous. Like, what do you think causes it, and do you think there is a, a way to solve it? If so, what do you think it is? Um, I absolutely do. So we had over 400 murders already. already. It's ridiculous. Dang, the hawk. Last year we set the record for the most homicides we've ever had. Yeah, and we in now, position to break it. We we position, we yep. cracking that record like on something crazy right now. Yeah, totally. Um, we already on it. You know, pray for all of our loved ones and stay safe out here. You know, you, if you're watching this, stay safe yourself. As far as what I think is causing that, I think that the pandemic had a lot to do with it. And not even just one factor of the pandemic, but really as a whole, you had a bunch of people that was supposed to be in the crib. You know, you got half the hood in the house, half Cooped the hood up. don't believe in it. You know, yep. COVID is fake and everything. <laughs> then on top of that, you give a bunch of people that ain't never had money, you give them a bunch of bread. Yeah. And then you know that they, you know what they're going to do. Fight. They blow that bread. They give people money, loan out money to people that's not getting it. Some of the people that is getting, they loaning out bread to people. Now they owe me money. Yeah. I'm gonna take this PUA money. I'm gonna buy some guns. Mm. You feel me? I'm gonna turn up. I'm gonna have a good time. I'm gonna enjoy. I'm gonna enjoy it because for all I know, in 2020, for all I know, I'm gonna die. It's COVID. Right. I'm gonna enjoy this. And then when you lose all that bread, now you angry. Mm. When it's nothing that's gonna make you angry like being broke. Now you like, want your neighbor's nothing, bread. It's nothing in the world that make you angry like being broke, man. And to be honest, I see I see the logic in it. It's no quick come up like robbing somebody that got money. Right. Trapping is, trapping is a, a, a relatively quick way to make bread, but it's not quicker than running through people's cribs. It's not quicker <laughs> than putting a pole in somebody's face and tell <laughs> give me everything you got right now. Mm. That's immediate. That's instant gratification right there. That's, that's, that's so GTA you, money. Exactly. GTA, man. So you, you give a bunch of people that never had money or never had money this fast. You give them a bunch of bread, then you take it away from them, right? Now everybody's broke and angry. Everybody bought guns because everybody else bought guns. So now everybody got the same guns. Mm. A bunch of people got cars that they're not supposed to have. Yep. Uh, you know, a bunch of people out here doing just generally doing things they're not supposed to do. And then getting they trying to chase that lifestyle. And then all of that is on top of the regular crime rate we already had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you got a lot of young boys out here that's snapping more than the old heads. Because you know, and you gotta remember too, it's pandemic year, no school really. No it's, school. It's online. You cooped yep. up. You got to do something. Especially you know? in the hoods where everything is real tight and close. Yep. Lit. Like agitated and is streets away. Mm -hmm. Your homie one street away. And you know what's crazy, right? The year I feel like personally, at least I feel like the year that we that they got the money because I didn't even, I was working I couldn't even get no money. But the year that they got the money, it wasn't as bad because people were hyped, happy to, were hyped to actually legally spend money. What? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't hear no oh. Jerry Stern getting robbed during the pandemic. Crazy. People was going in there and happily on Instagram with videos up, counting racks, <laughs> racks, put up put to, money on the table. Feet. Yeah, I'm at Sean with it. And Sean with the whole <laughs> racks. People took their PUA bread. Bought a couple pounds, broke the whole thing down, and act like they've been trapping for years. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and it's so like, a lot of people was happy to spend money. It was happy. happy to cut you the check. You see how it would be if everybody had money in the world. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let's crap. Everybody be happy to spend money with everybody. Yeah. And to take so, it back to the young boys, it's never been as easy to scam as it is right now. Yeah. yeah. The oh, young yeah. boys crack your credit card. Not not only is they getting free bread off this, they getting items for free. Some young boys wasn't even wanting the money. They just all right. I just ordered a bunch of Balenciaga, a bunch of Balenciagas to the trap block to this bando. <laughs> I'm gonna take them drums. I'm up. I might not even sell them drums. I I'm might up. walk around Balenciagas just cause I got them. Mm -hmm. A bunch of young boys. They, and then you know how everything spread like wildfire with the young boys. It's like all right, I know how to scam. I taught my two mans how to scam. Who taught they 15 mans how to scam? Now everybody in the hood is getting bread. And if I if I scam to get bread and I'm walking around with fifteen thousand and you one of the people that bought guns with your PUA money, now you rob me and then we now can go you back and forth. Back and forth. And, and once raps. you start that cycle, it's over. Yeah, it's a it's never like ending a cycle. It grows. And is 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 really not gonna stop unless changes are made. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as what we can do in the city to I don't think there's anything that can stop the crime rate, but as far as trying to contain it and slow it down, like I was talking about earlier, being the example. Because we, we we really define what cool is. Right. Um, one of the reasons I do what I do is because my young boys look up to me and they see somebody that they think is cool. I don't got to sell a drug to be cool. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. 
I don't got to finesse not a single shorty to be looked at as, oh, yeah, he's sturdy. I seen him with da 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 I don't got to be out here lying about who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't got to be out here selling drugs. I don't got to be out here toting guns. Just be you. I'm just myself. And then that's one part of it. Then the fact that I decide to be positive on top of that and decide to be a good-hearted person. Can't beat that. They like, oh, yeah, like, I might do things my own way, but I know that it's another route. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't got to be a hooper to be somebody that everybody look at as like, oh, he the man. I don't got to be a trapper to look be looked at as like, oh, he the man. I got my one homie make balloons. He one of the coolest people I ever met. Dang. So you mean the uh, the balloon boy that's heavy in Philly right now? Bri- Brian Brian the balloon, yeah. He one of the most genuine people I ever met in my wow, life. Wow, I know that shit yeah, guy. Get a boss talk balloon. Yeah, yeah man, get him a boss he, talk, he man. Stayed, <laughs> he stayed true to the grind. One of the most hardest working, down to earth people, and that's like he do something that like, oh yeah, you make balloons? No, use a wear though. But he stayed true to himself, and it's like. Oh yeah, I make balloons. He's like, popping off I'm, of that. I'm, 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 I'm making my way up there. Like I don't think nothing is weird when you got your own craft and you make it profit off it. Yeah, exactly. What you want to do? Yeah, you I don't know. Trying to trying to fit into the outs. fold is only going to make you a version of somebody else. Yeah, for sure. Being yourself, doing your own thing. Like imagine, imagine, I'm a marine biologist. People wanted to make fun of me in high school because I like science and I like. Talking about whales and stuff like that, but now I'm up. <laughs> I can see why. Marine biologists make six figures and whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. you really can be anything in this world no, that you want to be. The nerds is really winning right now. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Like, like the quote unquote nerds yeah. is doing everything. I was mm-hmm. watching. I was watching a snippet of a pod the other day. The quote unquote nerds is doing everything that we pay for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Making apps. Yep. Literally making video <laughs> games. All, all the everyday everything. things that you do. Yeah, all, everything that you do. Who, who, who you think made two two pieces? Think, bro. <laughs> the nerd. <laughs> you had to dive in, in them you books. Know what I mean? Like, y'all ever look at the rappers that that be? Right, I'm about to go to the jewelry store and get this chain. Who you think is selling these chains? Nerds. Just nerds. No, you uh, think, um, yeah. Think it's nerds. Yeah, they are. Look like, at them. <laughs> people from other cultures that back in high school people used to call them terrorists. Say they gonna blow something yep. up. These be the same people that's running their own stuff. That stayed in they stayed in a family lane, perfected that craft and made the millions or Johnny made them profit. Dang, you feel me? Yeah. Johnny Dang is one of the most accepted people in our culture because his ice is crazy. Yeah. You you don't even gotta think about the stuff that they were saying to him in high school, middle school. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, you know it on top of yeah. If he was from Philly, that's ten oh, times yeah. worse. Oh, sh- so, Woo! Uh, them same people that you want to clown yeah, right now for, for, for like making their own route. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's another thing. He's short. Mm-hmm. The same thing that you try and clown people on now for making their own route. Once they actually make their route, don't try to follow it. Yeah. Don't try to work for that person. You got to just do it. Don't try mm-hmm. to ride that wave. All right, Dev, man. You've been, you you getting us a lot of motivation, a lot of game today, man. You know what I mean? You, we love it. You know what I'm saying? Viewers love it, too. Make sure y'all taking all this knowledge and game and motivation. Now, man, we want to give you an opportunity to give the viewers oppor- uh, motivation directly to them. Like, speak mm-hmm. directly to them. So don't look at us. You've been talking to us. We're having a conversation. Yeah, but you're going to look directly in that camera right there. You know which one is your camera. And you're going to give them some motivation. You ain't got to go forever. But just give them something. Ma- Act like this is one of your videos. You know what I'm saying? Day, yeah, g- g- give us a minute, a minute of uh, motivation. You know, it ain't Wednesday, but let's get into it, man. <laughs> it's boss no talk day. What it is you want to do in this life? It ain't nothing that's gonna outwork your hard work. You can be the least talented person. You can be the the least intelligent person. Mm. But if you outwork all your competition, if you actually put in them hours that nobody else is gonna put in, you gonna outshine everybody. It ain't mm. nothing at work like hard work. Now, let me give you an example of this, right? We was talking about how I've been grinding for the last few years. I've been doing these videos for about three years now. I'm not trying to, like, blow up quick. I'm not trying to have one of these videos hit a mill. Now I'm famous and nothing like that. But guess what? When my time come and they see that I got five years, ten years worth of catalog of videos every Wednesday, and then I actually get that thing that's going to blow me up, guess what? I'm going to be ready for it. Mm. When you get your time, is you're going to be ready for it. Have you put in the necessary work to actually get to the stages that you say you want to get to? Do you have the actual catalog, the library, the craft, the hours of skill that when Jeff, when Jeff Bezos say, I want to invest in you, I want to put billions of dollars into what you're doing, do you know what you're going to do? 
do you know how you want to set it up? Have mm. you been putting them hours and have you been thinking about this enough to when you get your opportunity and you get your chance, you be like, all right, I've been thinking about this. I know exactly how I want to set this up. I know exactly where I want to take my craft. It don't got to just be a business. It could be a skill. It could be an idea that you got. It could be a hobby that you put in enough hours to, all right, bet somebody wants to commercialize you that you actually know what direction you want to take your thing into. Mm. Do you have that? Hard work is going to have you achieving that. Boss talk. Boss talk. Wow. Give us Boss talk. Clap it up, y'all. Yeah. Man, we got to drop some bombs. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready? You it's out there selling the lashes. Yes. With a beauty supply store and need a ship. Is you going to be ready? You going to be ready, man. Or are you out here doing hair? You going to be ready. When shorty need her hair done for the BET, is you going to be ready? Yes. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Matter of fact, anecdote real quick. And mind you, this is somebody that, like, she don't know me, and I only know her for her work. I don't know her personally. Her name is Qua Ross, Q-W-A underscore R-A-W-L-S. She getting tagged. She been, doing, she been doing hair for a minute. I've been paying attention to what she got going on. She been, like, really upgrading her craft over the years. James Harden was like, yo, I play for the Sixers now. I need somebody in, in the city to do my hair. Whew. She was ready. Woo. Mm. Boss talk. Boss talk. Oh my she god. Might get get on her. She gotta get believe, on this platform, I man. Right after that, Andre Drummond, like, yo, I seen what was up. What's up? Mm. She was ready. Boss That's talk. Dope. She was ready. <laughs> she was ready. She was ready. You feel what I'm saying? When Did BT's. You say that name again? Say it again. I believe. We're having a lower thirst. We're having a lower thirst. She's going to get her free promo today. <laughs> I believe, uh, I believe how you pronounce it is Qua underscore Rawls, Q W A underscore. R A W L S. I believe that's how you uh, got, uh, say her name. We'll, we'll clean you up if it ain't. If you it ain't saying? We we, we, exactly. We and that, that's another thing. One thing that I'm heavy on is if I appreciate somebody, I'm going to let them know or I'm going to mm, let other people flowers. know. Show the love. Do the flowers. Really. I don't care if this is somebody that don't know me. I don't care if this is somebody that support me. I don't care if this is somebody I never met before. I don't believe in supporting somebody strictly for the fact because they support you. I think that you should, should support the people that you believe in. Yeah, thanks. I think that you should endorse the people that you actually, that you actually <laughs> believe in what they got going on. I believe that you should out the people that you actually like what they doing. Mm -hmm. The whole like, yeah, that's, that's essentially like follow for follow. Follow yeah. a thousand people. Try to get a thousand people to follow you. Follow you back. That's not genuine. <laughs> no, it's you just because me? support yeah, the people I, you I, want I to support you. That, whatever you doing, that's yeah, high. I'm heavy on organic love. Mm -hmm. Like if y'all go to my brand page, I believe I got five something, almost six hundred followers, and the only person I'm following is me and my sister's business mm. and I did it on purpose because not because I'm trying to be bougie but it's like yeah, it's just, you know? if you follow me knowing that I'm not going to follow you back the love is organic love. love is organic I don't go around bro. telling people to follow me look check check out what I got going on if you like it go ahead I'm never trying to sell somebody a product that they don't want to buy if you like my hoodies alright cool cop yeah. if you oh I don't like the design all right, cool, it's not for you. All right, I don't like the price point. Okay, cool, it's not for you. I make clothes that I like so that I can wear them because I know I'm going to wear it every day. Mm. I make clothes that I think are affordable for me. And when it comes to, like, clothes, I'm not the type of boy to blow, blow huge bags, bags on fashion. On clothes, yeah. So it's like I'm not going to make my, my stuff priced in a way where I wouldn't buy it. Well, you mm -hmm. wouldn't you buy it. You feel me? Well, Dev, we got the time. It's the time we all been it's waiting the one. for. It's the one. I think he kind of he kind of answered it. A couple he kind of he did, but you he know we know he yeah. let no portion of he let, he let it. He let us know through oh, the pieces. I, I, I think I think I know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you feel me? Okay. Go ahead and ask the question. So, you feel me? You got to stay on brand. You feel me? What's Ball the, stop. Wait, what's the gram again? Huh? Chill, what? my name oh, Dev. Yeah, chill, chill, my name Dev. Chill, chill my name Dev. Chill, my it's name It's crazy Dev, you did right. the hand. Hey, yo, it's literally chill, my name Dev. Dev. Chill, the whole story right. behind it and all that, yo. Ah, yo, shit, oh, man, crazy. we out of time. Uh, ah, we needed that. We needed that. We're not talking about this next time, it's, Yeah, for hey, sure. you'll be back, brother. For sure, for sure. Listen, though, but 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 chill, because we know your name Dev. Yeah. We want to know why you a boss. Why am I a boss, man? Makes chill. My name Dev. A boss. Well, boss talk. This is what I believe makes you a boss. When you get up every day. What makes you a boss? You. This is what I believe makes me a boss. There we go. Mm. I get up every morning mm -hmm. and I do what makes me happy. I'm happy in my profession. I'm happy in my backup profession. I'm happy in my business. 
Mm. I'm happy in my school life. Mm. Like I told you, I got a lot going on. I actually, I be moving around. I'm in a lot of different avenues. I believe what makes you a boss is when you're able to get up and actually enjoy what you do. You can do something that you're passionate about. And this is an everyday thing. I'm not talking like no Monday through Friday. Every single day I get up, I enjoy life. Boss. That's boss. real rap. Woo! Clap it up. We drop some man. bombs for you. you Chill. Chill. Bye. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Boss dog. Both hands, you gotta chill. <laughs> hey, can that be the name of this drum? Yes. Two chill. hands for chill. chill. Two hands for chill. Two hands, Two hands for chill. Two hands for chill. Two hands for chill. Two hands for chill. Two hands this is not a stiff arm. Yes. No Heisman. This is two hands for chill. chill. Boss talk. Boss talk. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what's crazy? It's crazy how we get these boss talk names for these episodes. You feel what I'm saying? These come yeah. organically. Organic. That's, That's what, what I'm saying. This is organic, dog. This Every is time. Like, this is not from concentrate. Yes. It's straight a juicer in this room. This is from God itself. It's divine it's energy. It's organic. We're the Larry June. Real <laughs> red. <laughs> that might have upped on the two hands. <laughs> Dev, hey, we appreciate you for coming through here. Thanks, boss man. Talk with Josh and Keith, man. Mm-hmm. You are you're a boss. Welcome to the boss's circle. Sir, you did your sure. thing, man. Thank you for giving us motivation and giving Definitely. us motivation and the platform and viewers motivation. We wish you peace, love, and pos- uh, prosperity in all the yeah. things that you do as well. Sure. May God be with you and move throughout your life, man. Appreciate you heavily, bro. Here, man. And man, I, I'm happy that I've met you. You know, you're a great friend. For sure. And um, and yeah, I'm happy you've been able to hey, get man. on this platform and do your thing. Continue to spread. Peace, love, and prosperity. Oh, Thanks, real man. quick. This is my first podcast, and I wanted to get this exclusive to Josh and Keys. Y'all see me with a million on YouTube. Y'all see me with a million monthly listeners on Apple and Spotify. Man, just know where it. it started. It started at Boss it started Talk. It here. Speak it. Speak boss it. Boss Talk with Josh and Keys. Boss Talk from love. Peace, love, and positivity way. I, I ain't trying to steal your shot, but since you're speaking it, I got to say the same thing for Boss Talk, man. We a million, bro. Yes. We're going to hit it. We're going to hit a million. You feel what I'm saying? It's just gonna make us bread. Six months. Congratulations to six months. Just got, got, the, six months, just got the six months. Congratulations to six months. That's a, that's a milestone, bro. And we've been doing a great job of six yeah, months. Bro. A lot of great interviews, a lot of great content on solo episodes, a lot of great friends we made. Yeah. You know, we made a lot of great relationships Created. and we're only growing. Six months ago, good I network, didn't man. know that. Thank that you. All of these rappers and entrepreneurs, you know, entrepreneurs and athletes. In their own lane, politicians and shit like that will be like, you know, following us, knowing who we is and, and wanting to do things with us. So. Wanting to be on, y'all genuine. People want to be on this platform. Yeah, genuine sure, love. Bro. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's genuine love, bro. God so is I good. I really appreciate the six months. God is definitely good. Yes. More to come for my Boss Talk fans. That's right. More to come for the Peace, Love, and Prosperity fans. Yeah. Peace, Love, you and Positivity. Saying? We all going up. Me? It's all keep going up, guys. And, guys, make sure y'all continue to like, subscribe, comment, share. Give the content. Like I said before, share the content to at least five to ten people. Even Nook said that, too. So make sure y'all do that and, and, and pass the good content around and continue to run up them subscribers and the viewers. And we on all platforms. Continue to do y'all thing. Uh, we love y'all. We got a lot of surprises for y'all in the next six months. Exactly. Next six months after that, we're going to keep going. So it's, it's Boss Talk with Josh. Keys. And we out. <laughs>